Now, uh, we have done sen, uh, pasteurization, homogenization. Now, we will come to cream separation, right? In this 47th class of dairy and food process and products uh, technology, we come to this milk centrifugation that is by centrifugal force, application of this centrifugal force, you are separating fat, right? This principle is utilized for cream separation, all cream separators. This is a age old, age old process. Now, nothing has come up after that. Uh, in place of this, uh, so that uh, a better thing can be done. But till now, that the same old one is being uh, going on, and uh, still the centrifugal separators are the best for separation of cream from the milk, right? So, to what extent you can, that uh, depends on how the performance, of course, is there, but generally this is the best one as of now. So, we come to that centrifugal separation and uh, this centrifugal separation of milk fat uh, from milk is that feed added to spinning bowl, the process is like that, feed is added to a spinning bowl, then sedimentation of particles occurs in the centrifugal field, then flow is upwards at a particular rate which determines residence time in the device. Then separation happens if sedimentation velocity is high enough for particle to reach side of bowl within the residence time. And then large particles have higher settling velocities than the small particles and both large and small are st still particles and both large and small are still particles and that have small Reynolds numbers less than 1 and obey the Stokes law because to obey the Stokes law the Reynolds number has to be less than 1. So, whether it is large or small, both still undergo the uh, Stokes law and by that method gets separated because the Reynolds number according to that is less than, by less than 1. Unless Reynolds number is less than 1, slow uh, that Stokes law cannot be applied. So, that this d v rho by mu Reynolds number is d v rho by mu that uh, remains because d is not so high such that r e becomes greater than 1, r e remains always less than 1, right. So, Stokes law can be applied. So, with this process, if we look at the schematic presentation that you have a motor which, which is flowing the milk or in this case milk for separation of cream, right. So, light fraction is coming out and the heavier fraction is coming out right and uh, this is the heavy layer and this is the light layer that is why with two colors uh, we have shown it right this is the feed which is going through this so this is the inner one lighter one is going on and this is the heavier one, outer one that is coming out, right. So, this is from old one Britannica that one photograph. Now, separation of milk into skimmed milk and cream is done with the help of centrifugation and, and the schematic again diagram we can use 
from this we have taken that uh, this is the uh, centrifugal separator right so heavier heavier one that is coming out like this and the and the lighter one that is coming out like that right so light liquid fraction is uh, this and this is the feed and heavy liquid fraction is this so light one is this and heavy one is this or rather light uh, light one is this and heavy one is this right so how it is getting separated then we come how the same principle works i hope in every park you have seen such kind of merry go round right every park you have seen such kind of merry go round just to give you idea this i have shown that those merry go round they are you have seen that this is rotating like that right somebody is making this rotation so as the rotation is becoming becoming heavier or or the revolutions are becoming more then the when if you, you if this brings back you into your childhood that when you were doing this you were feeling that you will be thrown out right you will be thrown out like that right so that was the same principle is also working so this you have uh, done during your childhood and uh, this this uh, true in every park children park it is there right so this is the typical example of a centrifugal motion or centrifugal force acting right on this principle only the scrim separation also takes place right so there the centrifugal motion is like this centrifugal acceleration that works at r omega square is o if omega is the uh, angular velocity and if r is the radius then the centrifugal acceleration that works equals to r omega square omega is the angular velocity in radian per second and r is the radius of rotation right so this is the r r is the radius of rotation so this is the center and this is the r where r is the this and omega is the angular velocity by which it is moving right so centrifugal force that becomes then this is the centrifugal acceleration r omega square centrifugal force that becomes m r omega square right where m is the mass of the particle if m is the mass of the particle omega is the velocity of the or angular velocity of the particle and r is the uh, radius of rotation then m r omega square is the is the centrifugal force acting on the particle right then if we compare the two separation one is centrifugal separation and another is gravity settling right if we compare these two then what we see that that if we compare these two that gravity separation with the same centrifugal separation then in this gravity separation it becomes mg and in this m r omega square the force which it is working that is acceleration is constant in the gravity separation but in the uh, centrifugal separation acceleration increases with r because here there is no r mg that is how it depending on g at that g this mg is working but this is depending also on omega as well as on the r Oh, through which it is rotating right so this is also accelerating with r also accelerating with the increase of omega 
but it is the constant acceleration right then in direction in this is in the direction of the earth this is away from the axis of rotation this is the direction of earth it is working but this is away from the axis of rotation if this is the axis of rotation then it is away from the axis of rotation that is getting acted equilibrium velocity is raised in this there is an equilibrium velocity is raised here equilibrium velocity is never raised never you will reach because this r and omega because of that equilibrium velocity will not be raised terminal velocity is given by that v terminal is equals to d square into rho p minus rho f into g by 18 mu that is the terminal velocity with which uh, the gravity is getting separated where d is the particle diameter in which the where d is the particle diameter uh, having mass m then rho p is the density of the particle in kg per meter cube rho f is the density of the fluid in kg per meter cube g is the acceleration due to gravity in meter per second square and mu is the viscosity of the fluid in pascal seconds whereas in this we get the instantaneous velocity here it was terminal velocity here it is instantaneous velocity that is v equals to v t into r omega square into uh, r omega square, square by g where v t is the terminal velocity of the particle r is the distance from the axis of rotation and omega is the angular velocity. So, instantaneous velocity v is v t times r omega square by g whereas, it is v t that is terminal velocity is by the Stokes law d square rho p minus rho f into g by 18 mu right. So, this v is v time uh, uh, r omega square by g times v terminal right. So, that means this velocity is much much higher than this velocity because this v is v t times this whereas, this is v t right. So, the keeping this thing in mind keeping this thing in mind let us see that how it is getting separated right. So, if we look at this is a typical uh, colored picture of a centrifugal separator right all the segments are there all the things are there one is the product inlet this is the product inlet two is the distributor so two is the distributor that is this one right so this is the distributor so two is the distributor three is three is the disk stack so these are the disk stack one disk two disk three disk four disk five disk like that disk stacks right so 4 is the light phase centripetal pump, 4 is the light phase centripetal pump this one right. So, light phase that comes out from the inner one that is why it is centripetal and 5 is the heavy phase centripetal pump, 5 is the heavy phase centripetal pump which is this one. So, it comes out from here right then 6 is the heavy phase outlet this is the heavy phase outlet from the uh, outer side and 7 is the light phase outlet this is from the inner side light phase outlet then then 8 is the solid 
impurities or solids or impurities if there be any then that solid or impurities that come out. So, this is that solid or impurities right that is this then 9 is the discharge holes right discharge holes 9 is the discharge holes. So, that discharge holes are this and then 10 is the moving ram. So, moving ram uh, is like that this disc when they are put like this. So, 10 is the moving ram. 11 is the water closing chamber, 11 is the water closing chamber, then 12 is the bowl valve. So, 12 is the bowl valve, then 13 is the operating water inlet for bowl opening that is the operating water inlet for bowl opening then 14 is the operating water inlet for bowl closing that is 14 is the water uh, 14 is that uh, operating water inlet for the bowl closing right so this is a this is a typical colored pictorial view of the description of the centrifugal uh, cream separator right so if you look at this picture where it is saying that clarification or separation uh, is like this that this is the outlet this is the inlet through which it is coming right and then it is going like this like this and then going like that right milk moves out to inside that is the lighter uh, milk moves out like this that is the heavier heavier one is the milk and lighter one is the is the is the cream right so, and this is the outlet that is the that is that is the another so the heavier one goes to the outer one that is the uh, milk uh, without fat milk but without fat so that is going to the outer one and the uh, fat from the inner one it is coming out right and you see the separation takes place this is the skim milk this is coming out and interior this is the outer one interior there is a cream which is happening. So, if we make this is the symmetrical. So, if we take one of that. So, like this if we take one part then it looks like that skim moves out outwards right. This skim is skim milk is moving outward and the cream moves inwards the cream because of the light density. But you can also find out because at a moment it will come here right. The moment it is the coming here it will not be separated it will go a little and then the cream will start going out this and the cream will go, go, go out of this. So, uh, what velocity is occurring that also can be estimated or that also can be predicted right, but uh, that becomes a more theoretical so which at this moment I do not want to go because we are not having so much time to do in so de detail right. So, working principle if we look at it looks like this that working principle of a disc bowl centrifuge is like that this is the typical disc right. This is what I was referring to that when it is coming like this. So, it goes a little and then the lighter phase comes towards the inner side and the heavier phase goes to the outer side right. So, this is the dense phase this is the light phase right. So, these are the discs ok and if we take a sectional view like this then it looks like that ok. It looks like that if you take the sectional view like this it looks like that. So, skim milk 
that comes out from the outer one and the cream that comes out from the inner one right. So, if we look at disc bowl and tubular centrifuge can have capacities even up to 1,50,000 1,50,000 liters per hour. Better separation is obtained by the disc bowl centrifuge due to the formation of the thinner layers of liquid. Periodic cleaning of a deposited solid is required. You remember sometime back we had said that deposited solid. Let me show it again deposited solid that we had said earlier here. So, the deposited solid was this 8, 8 where is that 8, 8 is the solids or impurities right this is what. So, this is the solid or impurities. So, that must be cleaned periodically otherwise that will create again some source of infection which is not desirable right that is what we are also saying here. So, what is that that better separation is obtained by the disc bowl centrifuge ok better separation is obtained by the disc bowl centrifuge and uh, due to the formation of the thinner layers of liquid right. So, the uh, uh, other one was uh, your tubular centrifuge, but in the tubular centrifuge uh, then that the Dix bowl centrifuge is much better because it is making some thinner layer. So, for which the uh, because you see that disc how they are right I uh, this is available in every lab in any dairy institute this is available. So, small uh, size and all the discs like that the previous one which I have shown you that uh, the disc one yeah like this right. These are there in every lab it is there and uh, they are they look like this. So, uh, this uh, height and uh, yes they are so compact that is why it is much better than the tubular ones right. So, decibel centrifuge is until that I tell you till that the people could not make anything better than that for the separation of the cream. Anything better than this this is very easy very I mean low cost, but separation is very high and um, till now as no alternative could have uh, switched over uh, from this to the uh, new one. Because it uh, till now it has been found that this is the most viable and most uh, utilized uh, most efficient one that Dix bowl centrifuge right. Other even as we said tubular centrifuge or many others they are in no comparison closer to the disc bowl one right. So, if you want to separate cream then you have to use the disc bowl centrifuge only right. So, uh, periodic cleaning of deposits or solids they are compulsory or mandatory then disc ball centrifuge disc ball centrifuge in addition to being widely used for separation of cream from whole milk is also used for clarification of oils then coffee extracts and juices right and separation of starch gluten etcetera right. So, the application of Dix bowl centrifuge not only for this fat separation, 
but also for clarification of oils or coffee extracts uh, and juices uh, and separation of starch gluten uh, all these applications the disc wall centrifuge is used very much right now if you remember i said the other day or even in the last class also that the fat globules they try to agglomerate and then get separated right and this here also we have shown that the gravity gravity separation as well as the centrifugal separation right so if i give you a problem can you do that and don't expect that tomorrow i mean the next class i will do it this is for you only that let us frame one uh, problem utilizing the uh, information given here right this information if we utilize that in one case this and in other case that that found i find out the you write the problem that find out yeah let me write here find out the velocities for number 1 gravity separation number 2 the centrifugal separation for a milk fat having a diameter d is equals to say 10 micron because 10 i am giving so that you can use very easily 10 micron size then for gravity separation what else you need particle or density of the particle rho fat this is equals to say 950 right then rho milk that is equals to say 1030 right so in that case your all gravities are over and mu mu mil is equals to say 1.3 10 to the power minus 3 pascal seconds so with this same information the other one is say uh, angular velocity omega this is uh, uh 15 okay 20 20 radians per second and uh, other than omega what you need uh, this is all given right so if we come back to our original if we come back to the original okay if we come back to the original what else is required this already given right this already given this is also given o and g value of course you take 
9.81 right meter per second square and uh, this is we have given this we have given this we have given this also we have given d this d is the o oh, this d is the diameter of the fat and this r we have not given say r is equals to uh, 0 0.4 uh, meter right 40 centimeter 40 centimeter yeah say 0 0.4 0 0.4 meter if we say this r is equals to 0 0.4 meter right omega we have given uh, angular velocity that we have given 15 or 20 say 20 then it becomes easier 20 radians per second right if this is given then find out what is the v t and what is the v so this you compare and uh, see the difference you will find v is much much higher than v t okay thank you